About a year ago, I made the smartphone project where I pushed the camera of my smartphone to its limit in order to try to create professional grade time lapses. I got some comment on that video saying that I should do the same with an action camera. So it was perfect timing when I got an email from a company called Insta360 asking me if they could do a sponsored video where I tried to do the same thing with their new camera, the Insta360 ONE R. The ONE R is actually one of the most interesting cameras I've seen in a while because it's modular. The camera consists of three parts. The first one is the lens and sensor mod. There are three different mods that you can use here. You have the normal action cam mod, you have the 360 mod, which you can take 360 video and photos off, and you have the big sensor one inch mod with a 14.4 millimeter fisheye lens. And this is one I'm gonna use for this project. More on that later. The second part is the brain and the screen and where you have the uh, USB-C port for charging and transferring files and your micro SD card slot. The cool thing is that you can actually turn the screen around if you wanna uh, film yourself or if you wanna shoot in hard to get to places. And third, you have the red battery pack at the bottom. And the cool part is that even though this is modular, you can still uh, take it underwater. This is waterproof down to five meters. And if you wanna go even further down, like I wanna do when I'm scuba diving, you have the dive case as well, which uh, will take it down to 60 meters without problem. Okay, so Insta360 is first and foremost famous for their 360 cameras. And uh, that's why we had to try the 360 mod over the weekend with uh, the crew here at the Views office. That was the first time I was using a 360 camera and it was a lot of fun and uh, a completely different way of filming uh, because you don't have to think about the framing but rather the movement of the camera and the movement of the uh, of the, your characters. But I am going to use for this project the one inch mod and what's so good about this mod for timeless photography? Well it's the big sensor. Normal action cameras usually come with a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. The 1 inch sensor in the Insta360 ONE-R, however, is about twice as big in each direction, making the total area of the sensor over four times bigger than the 1 over 2.3 inch sensor that you find in other action cams. And this will give you great advantages when it comes to low light performance and also, more importantly for me, dynamic range. By comparison, here are the sizes for Micro Four Thirds, APS-C, and full frame cameras. Here is even a negative from my 6x7 medium format analog camera, which is huge. So, how will this perform? If you haven't already seen the full video, uh, I've linked it down in the description. I have only five days to shoot the time lapse with this. Here's my journey. I think I'm gonna follow this river down to the lake and hopefully we'll find something nice down there. Um, it's already sunset, so just have to find a place to sleep. Just have to get the cameras up, get the last light of the sunset. I was thinking of setting up my tent here, but I think I rather want to do a hammock between these trees. It's not that often that I put up my hammock because usually I'm a little bit higher up, so there are no trees. This is perfect.
woke up to this beautiful, you know, small layer of clouds laying over the lake here. Very beautiful. I thought it would be nice to make the shots a little bit more dynamic, so I put the 1R on my Serp Genie, pan tilt and the linear for a little slide here uh, with some rocks in the foreground. I also put on the ND filter um, just to get a bit of a longer exposure. Uh, I think I'm doing two seconds here. And that is just to smooth out the water a bit um, when doing static time lapses. It's quite easy to just smooth out the water, but uh, when doing motion control timeouts, it's a little bit more tricky. Uh, you can do it uh, in my master timeouts course at mastertimeouts.com. I show how you can uh, smooth out water even on motion controlled uh, time lapses. But when I have the ND filter here, just why not? Let's try it out. It's pretty foggy here now, so I think a good idea would be to try to get above the fog because down here it's not that interesting right now. So when I was here back a year ago uh, shooting the smartphone project, I just took the, the gondola up to the top and I was planning on doing that now too. But it's closed for maintenance, so I have to walk instead. That is pretty far, seven, 700 meters uh, of elevation up. That was a bit of a bummer, to be honest. Pretty far, but look at this view. Damn. Almost there, but I guess 20% left. Ooh. Nice. The setup is running again and uh, I'm using just a linear here right now because I didn't need any pan or tilt. So the way I do it is no triggering between the genie and the camera, right? So what I'm doing is I'm doing the interval mode uh, as if I were doing a static time-lapse on the Insta360 and then on the Genie I'm doing a continuous mode so it's not the move shoot move uh, that I would usually do with the bigger cameras um, so just a linear move so it will move just very slowly up here and that works perfectly fine um, there's now a real big disadvantage of, of using the continuous mode except if you're doing very long um, very long exposures you might get a little bit of blur in your images but um, for cases like this it's perfectly fine so I slept here on the top and I just woke up to this look at this it's just what I was hoping for it's just why I went up here um, so I'm not gonna film any more of this because I'm gonna set up every single camera I have in all directions and try to get the best out of this.
The clouds have risen, 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 risen. The clouds have gone off. Um, so we're now covered in fog, uh, and we've been like that for a couple of hours. So I think it's time to head back down. Uh, anyway, I got some really incredible footage here today. Uh, I hope so, at least. Uh, perfect conditions, dream conditions. So, uh, good start to this uh, whole project. I'm back. You might recognize this mountain. This is where I shot what became the opening scene of the smartphone project video. And it's such a beautiful place, so I thought I should go back. It's a bit of sun. It's also a bit of rain at the same time, and you know what that means? Rainbows, beautiful rainbows. This is the 360 camera. Pretty cool. This rainbow is so intense. It's been like this for probably 10, 15 minutes. Oh, even more, 20 minutes. It's crazy. That's good, because that gives me a little bit more time to set it up, shoot it. Good morning. Unfortunately, there was no cloud inversion down here. It's a bit annoying because I think there are actually cloud inversion down in that, in the neighboring valley. I can see some clouds peeking through there, uh, down there. So, yeah, but uh, it's a very nice morning anyway. Uh, this is starting to look good. Look at that light over there. Nice. Doing some auto. Uh, or ISO priority now. So I put the ISO on 200 and then it's doing the uh, shutter speed automatically. And from what I've seen so far, it's really smooth in uh, this uh, holy grail time lapses. It's time for the big final. Um, this trip is coming to an end, but I'm gonna end this off with a two to three day trip in uh, a beautiful valley here in Western Norway. And this is some of the problems I had with all this big gear before is that it's too heavy to bring for a very long trip. So I had backpacks of up to 50 kilos before. And it's just too much if you wanna go for many, many days. But now uh, that I have this very light, small gear, I can go for longer trips. Uh, and I'm going really bare bones here with uh, just two of these cameras. I'm vlogging on one of the cameras. So as you can hear, the sound is uh, probably a bit uh, worse, uh, but you can add a microphone on top of this camera as well. Uh, but I didn't have a mic uh, that would fit in. Uh, so you can just buy an adapter. But do you recognize this place? Uh, you should if you saw the first Norway video that I made back in 2014. And that's this mountain, this opening scene, a very, very beautiful mountain. And also it was included in Seasons. And that's a bit of a different shot. All the way over there, it's, it's quite far, but it's a completely different shot. So this is a very interesting area. And I'm gonna be walking up on these mountains over here and around in the valleys.
what I really like about this camera is the batteries, which are really small and handy. So you can bring a lot of them without adding too much weight. And it's also really easy to charge. Like I have this um, dual charger right here and you can charge them uh, with just your power bank. And yeah, it's like really quick and convenient and you can uh, just plug USB-C right into your camera as well while you're shooting and it will charge the battery while you're shooting. So. Usually when I'm out shooting, it's pretty hectic. I go up in the afternoon, then I stay shooting uh, during the night and the morning, and then I go down in the morning, and then I drive to a new place, and I go up on a new mountain, and you know, you don't always really get to relax as much. Uh, and when you're able to go on a three-day trip like this, and I've been on like seven days trip before, it, it's, it's really beautiful. Like you get the calmness you can you know read a good book and especially when it's like this it's not exactly the perfect time lapse conditions it's not that much happening but it's still a very very good uh, nature experience so the ascent has begun in the chase for some good views. I have been looking at one uh, mountain top that looks promising, but it's a good 800 meters of altitude climb. So let's we'll see how it goes. <laughs> This is where I'm gonna go on top of that mountain. And now made it to this beautiful lake on top of here. Still though I'm going to the top of this mountain uh, or this ridge somewhere to find somewhere to stay for the night. I said it before and I want to repeat it and that's if you want to get good time lapses you need to work hard and you might get one or two or ten good shots from out your car window or from the, your balcony at home but if you want consistent good time lapses you have to work hard now I'm almost at the ridge and I'm really excited to see what's on the other side to see if it was all worth it. I'm just gonna watch today's stage of Tour de France, then I'm gonna start shooting.
Got some cool clouds down in the valley tonight. Um, I don't know if I got to capture them like as good as I wanted to, but I think I got some shots with them in. Uh, and then unfortunately they disappeared uh, around 3, 4 a.m. But now I set up what I, the initial shot that I was planning to do here, uh, which is the Alpen Glow on these mountains uh, in the background here. Uh, doing a little bit of a drive on the Genie. I think it's gonna be pretty nice. Uh, in ISO priority mode, at ISO 200. And they do the shutter speed automatically. Um, the aperture is, of course, fixed on these cameras. And it's time to head home. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the office, the studio, and have a look at the footage, edit it, and maybe come with a little conclusion of what I think about this camera. Okay, so how did this camera perform? Please let me know in the comments below what you think. So here are my thoughts. I think this is a super interesting camera and the bigger sensor really makes a very, very big difference overall. The raw files are really nice to work with. There are lots of details and dynamic range. And when I thought I had overexposed the shot, I was able to recover it nicely. It's definitely way, way better than shooting with my phone. The low light is of course nowhere near what you will find in a full frame camera, but it is really impressive for being such a small device. And a big bonus for us timeless photographers, there are generally pretty much no flicker in this, uh, even when you have it in automatic modes. There are a few quirks that makes this a little bit difficult to work with uh, when it comes to time-lapse, uh, and the first is interval. Usually one calculates the interval uh, from the beginning of one photo until the beginning of the next photo. This camera, however, calculates the interval from the shot is finished process to the start of the next photo. This can sometimes give a bit uneven intervals because the way this uh, processes the images can vary a little bit in time. And also depending on how long your shutter speed is, it will also affect your interval. However, I didn't find it to be that big of a problem. And as you can see, uh, the time lapses are pretty smooth. In addition, the camera is a little bit slow to process the photos. So uh, the shortest interval I was able to get from this was seven seconds, which is a little bit much, but uh, it was manageable. But if you want to have shorter uh, intervals than that, you can go into the kind of the video timeless mode where you don't get uh, raw photos, but uh, rather a finished video file where which looks good, but you don't have the raw files to work with. So is this camera going to replace my fantastic Panasonic S1R? No, of course it isn't. And it was never meant to be. These are not competing products, but I will continue using this for professional shoot, but this will be a very nice companion when I'm traveling and doing more low key stuff. And with this small camera, you can create such amazing photos and videos. And I'm definitely taking this for next time I'm scuba diving. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, as I said, please let me know in the comments what you think of this camera. Would this be something that you could use for your time-lapsing as a handy small camera? It's pretty cool, isn't it?